you do have your Bibles, tablet, cell phone, whatever you can get signal with in here, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 18, focusing in on verses 21 through 35. When you're there, would you stand with me in honor and reverence for the reading of God's Word? We will be reading what looks like several verses of Scripture, but it will go by quickly. Matthew 18, beginning at verse 21. If I was to give this a title this evening, I would entitle it, Five Steps to Find Kindness. Now, we started walking the extra mile this morning. Tonight, we're going to keep walking in a kind direction. Verse 21 says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened or compared unto a certain king, which would take an account of his servants. Here is a parable. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. Verse 26. And the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Verse 27. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him. And forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him. He begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him and to prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw that was done, they were very sorry, and they came and they told the Lord all that was done. I'm going to pause right there, and let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray tonight that as we are encouraged to be in this house of worship, we are encouraged to be able, for those that are watching the service this evening, we're praying for them as well. We're praying for... A, a, a direction for kindness and how we can learn from this passage of scripture how we can be better lights to a darkened world and express your kindness and express your grace and mercy. Lord, we realize tonight is a parable of a picture of one who has received grace and one has shown grace. Lord, we thank you for this passage and we pray your Holy Spirit have liberty and freedom tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated this evening. I want to share with you a story that I'd heard several years ago, and it was that of a mother. Now, if you're a mother or a grandmother, or if you've watched any kind of children at all, you can relate to this. Perhaps it was a sibling of yours, but a mother was watching and taking care of the house whenever she began to hear a scream take place coming down the hallway in the far bedroom. She had a young son that was back there, also a, a, a young daughter that was back there, about the age of two years of age, and whenever they heard the scream coming from the back bedroom, the, the, the mother ran back down the hallway to see what was going on, only to find that two-year-old girl had that little boy's hair all wadded up in her hand, pulling on his head. The mother come in, pried the little girl's hands away from the little boy's hair, and said, there, there, and looked at the little boy and said, she's only two, she doesn't know any better, she didn't know or realize that hurt you. The mother walked out of the room, began to walk down the hallway. As she began to walk down the hallway, she heard again another terrifying scream. This time, it was the voice of the little girl. She ran back into the room to see what was happening and said, what's going on in here? This time, the two-year-old was crying her eyes out and said, what's going on? What did you do? And the little boy said, she knows it hurts now. <laughs> the 
many times when we don't respond with kindness, we respond with pain of equal value. I talked to you about that this morning, and I just want to keep building on that theme of when, you do, when you've been done wrong. Anybody in here ever been done wrong? I don't know. Let me see a show of hands. Have you ever been done wrong? Okay, let's see if we've got any honesty. Have you ever done anybody wrong? I see more hands going up that would be confessing that we've done more wrong than we have, uh, than we have received wrong. But the fact is, is that how did you treat that person that did you wrong? Have you truly forgiven them? Have you treated them with kindness or have you treated them with bitterness? Have you treated them with aggravated looks and snarls or just ignorance? Or have you really responded to them in a forgiving manner and, and, and seeing what uh, we can learn from this passage of Scripture, I hope that we can get past those that have done us wrong and that we can move forward with kindness. Now, I want to continue walking down the topic of kindness as we saw it here in Matthew 18, 21, 25. And if I was to give you five steps towards kindness, we're going to go through them quickly this evening. Five steps towards kindness. We need to kill the hurt that you have experienced. And how do you kill hurt? You kill it with kindness you say not me I'm going to pull their hair I'm going to laugh at them I'm going to mock at them no you kill the hurt that you have had to endure with kindness you say that doesn't make sense I want to do unto others as what's been done unto me kill them with kindness don't treat people the way you've been treated you treat them better than you've been treated but what we do with, with that hurt that's how we impact. That's how we treat people. An example, we can hold on to the hurt so long that we can be transformed into hate. And that's my fear. Some of us, we've been hurt, and we hate everything, and we end up hating everybody, and we, we feel so vulnerable. We say, I can't believe I let myself get in this position. I, I'm not going to do that again. I hate what happened to me. And then we can allow hate to fester up and build up inside of us that we become very bitter, we become very angry, and we look no different than the world. And as Christians, we must be mindful, as this passage of Scripture says, as we have been granted and given kindness, we must also be able to give and grant kindness toward others and moving forward. But often the person that hurts us, they don't even know that they hurt us. And yet we're still sitting there festering and building it up. So the thing is, is you've got to just be willing tonight to kill the hurt with kindness. Just put on kindness and see what will happen. The second thing I want to share with you this evening is that we need to abide by God's instruction manual to express that kindness. Now many times we think that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, and the ways there are, are death. And, and we think about situation this way and it's not God's way sometimes we even think we're doing a good deed and whenever we try to set out to do a good deed and it didn't get responded very well by the person we were trying to impress or treat kind we get mad and we get bitter but here's the thing don't treat them the way that they treated you you treat them with the kindness that Jesus Christ has given you and you love them as our motto is here at Oklahoma love them with the love of Jesus, and therefore, if they don't receive the kindness that you are trying to bestow upon them, it's not you who they are rejecting, it's the Jesus that is inside of you that they are rejecting, and they will be the ones that would be bitter and will not be any better. So my position on this second point is, is that we need to follow the manual of loving them and offering them kindness of Jesus, not the kindness of Jason. Not the kindness of Susan, not the kind, her, Susan, her kindness is a lot better than my kindness, but not the kindness of John, uh, uh, not the kindness of, of Stanley, not the kindness of others. You offer them the kindness of Jesus. And then you did the best you could, you gave that 100%, and then you are clear. You are able to walk away, but you've got to love them with the love of Jesus and don't hold back. Peter was coming to Jesus with a little issue. He was coming to Jesus with a problem he was having with somebody. He said, you know what? Somebody has done me wrong, but oh, aren't I holier than thou? Aren't I so good? Look at me, look at me. You know what I've done? I've went to them and that person's done me so wrong and so bad. I've treated them with kindness because I have forgiven them 
seven times. Look at me. Aren't I something? Aren't I nice, Jesus? You see, Peter was looking for some props in this. But now to give Peter a little bit of uh, a build up here, the norm would have been from that of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and these others, what they would have looked at is the rabbis taught during that time frame to forgive those who offended you three times. That mindset is in baseball. I, I think it's the baseball mindset. Three strikes and what? You're out. Do we ever do that as parents or even grandparents or if you've watched a child before? What do we often do? Three strikes and you're out. One, two, don't make me get to three, don't we? We often do the three strike and you're out mindset. That was really taught a long time ago by the rabbis. But what Peter said is that I didn't only do what the rabbis recommended, I went the extra mile. I heard what you said. I, if I go the extra mile, I didn't just double it and go six. What if I forgave them seven times? And you know what Jesus said to him? It's not just enough to go the extra mile. You need to keep traveling down that road long after that. I've always said, you know what the difference is between a winner and a champion? I used to run track. And this verse of scripture would often come back to my mind when I would run track. The difference between a winner and a champion, a winner stops at the finish line, but a champion keeps on running. You don't stop. You keep running the course. You never quit. You always train and prepare yourself. You keep running. And listen, this spiritual life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. It is an ongoing thing. And what Jesus said to him was this. Don't just forgive them seven, but forgive them seven times 70. And you're saying, wait a minute, seven times 70. Let me do the math on that. 490, that's 490 times? I'm supposed to forgive somebody 490 times? I just forgave them seven times. The point that Jesus is trying to make, now I'm a very literal reader, and if he said 490, 490, so it is. But I think that there's an even ongoing principle to this, that what Jesus was trying to bestow upon Peter was an understanding is that if you really want to understand the instruction manual to kindness, we're to always be kind. I like the song by the great philosopher Tim McGraw. Always be humble and kind. It's a really good song, no matter who you come in contact with. Just some good manners, good chivalry. Always be humble and kind, not just 490 times. Always be humble and kind. You say, I don't feel like it. I've not had my coffee yet. Don't talk to me. The Bible didn't say, wait until you've had your coffee before you can start being kind. I, I saw a funny t-shirt the other day at uh, Buffalo Wings and Rings. And it was a cute t-shirt. On the back of it, it said, I'm sorry for what I said to you when I was hungry. Anybody in here ever get hangry? You know what hangry is? If not, you're the one I'm talking about. Okay. Sometimes we get hangry means we get, we, we get angry. And the thing is, is what Peter was talking about here is, is Jesus is not only going to try to help him, but he's going to give him a visual illustration to to understand it a little better. Verse 23, the parable he's going to give is a, is a parable of that of heaven compared to a certain king. And let's read verse 24. I like verse 24 where it says, And when he had begun to reckon, you didn't know the Bible had country slang in it. Well, I reckon you didn't, but I did. To reckon means to settle an account. When you settle an account, you've got to reconcile. That's a, a, that's a business, that's a banking term, to reconcile the account. And he's going to give this illustration here to Peter about forgiveness, and he's going to give him some astronomical numbers. First of all, let's, let's just break it down. Verse 24, And when he had begun to reconcile, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, how much is a talent? Anybody know how much uh, a, a talent is? Or, or if anything, 10,000 talents? Well, let me just tell you, a talent is worth 6,000 denarii. Now, did that help you out any? How, 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 how better do you feel now? 
you thought 10,000 talents is equal to 6,000 denarii. Well, let me, let's put it in a little bit better perspective. A denarii is basically an average worker's day's wage, okay? So this would take ordinary labor 6,000 days. This man owed, let me just put it, let me break it down for you, 60 million days worth of debt. Now, I don't know who to, who's at fault here, the one that loaned him that much, knowing that he's not going to live past 120 and that he's going to be able to pay 60 million days worth of debt. That's 164,383 years worth of debt. Some of you have some bank loans and some bank payments, but don't you love it when they put it on 36? Don't you love it when they put it on 60? Don't you like it when they put it on 72? Could you imagine somebody getting a loan debt for 164,000 years? The point that Jesus is trying to make here to Peter is that this individual could never return and could never ever repay the debt that was owed to him. It was an astronomical figure. So here, what he says is this man owed this much money and the point is it's unpayable. But in verse 25, look at what kindness is gonna be bestowed upon him. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and the payment to be made. All right, he can't pay it. He's going to have to pay up somehow. So the servant therefore fell down and he worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. There's no way that he could repay back that which he owed. This was a lie, basically, but his heart was right. He said, I want to, I'll pay you back. I'll do whatever it takes. Please, and I want you to understand what the Lord, this means the covenant cutter, his, the, the one that he owed money to. He said this in verse 26. He fell down, therefore, and he worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. In verse 27, and the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion. He was moved with kindness. He, and that's what you say, you, the Bible says compassion. A compassion means that I have pity upon him, and I can express kindness to him and he loosed him and he forgave him the debt folks i don't know about you but whenever that old sin debt that i had upon me was forgiven with the kindness of jesus christ it was an overwhelming burden it was like a weight had been lifted off of me it whenever you become debt free it is sin debt free oh my goodness what an overwhelming joy there is and we must, I believe as Christians, sometimes we have gone days, months, and years, and we have forgotten about the kindness that Jesus Christ has bestowed upon us. And we don't treat people the way that God has treated us. We treat them like the world because they're in the world. And that's not the way we're to respond. We are to treat others with kindness, mercy, and grace. The third thing I want to share with you tonight is kindness reveals the heart of an individual. You know how... I can't tell who's saved and who's not. Only God knows that. Only God knows whose names were recorded fully in the Lamb's Book of Life. But we are fruit inspectors, and one of the fruits that we can expect is this, a kind heart. If you still have an old, hardened, bitter heart, if you're still angry about everything and everybody and, uh, and all kinds of things, if you always have something to complain about, then I encourage you to examine the kindness of your heart because where your heart is, your, your head will follow. If your heart is on the mind focus of Jesus Christ, you, you have a drawing towards Him. And if you're kind and loving toward Him, you'll want to be kind and loving toward other people. Have patience with me, He said. Goes deeper. The key verse here was in verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with that compassion, kindness, going deeper. Man, I'm going to tell you, we could end the story right here. I could say, let's dismiss musicians, if you would, would you come? And we could stop right here and go home. What a wonderful story. This man owed an astronomical figure. Hey, let's rejoice. Let's go home. But it doesn't stop there. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of Christians do stop. They stop at the cross, but they don't teach about the resurrection. Without the resurrection, there, the cross is in vain. You must understand the resurrection of Jesus Christ brings about new life and putting to death the old man and walking in a new life. Amen. And what we must do as Christians is we must come out with kindness 
that the kindness of the death of the old person that you used to be, you're no longer that person. You're no longer bound by sin and bondage and debt and greed and dirt and all that stuff. You are washed clean. And if you have truly been born again, then you are to walk in a newness of life. And which leads me to my fourth point this evening. We need to be reminded of the, of the kindness that we have been granted here. Many a Christian, many a brother and sister in Christ have forgotten the kindness that we have been bestowed upon us. And we're going to see here what Jesus is going to teach Peter in this parable in verses 28 and 30. You know that one that had just received grace, that one that had just received mercy, that had literally 164,000 years worth of debt built up to be forgiven of? Look at how his kindness goes out back into the world being forgiven how he treats other people. Verse 28 says, But the same servant, that's the one that just been forgiven, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Anybody in here know how much a, hundred, uh, how much a pence is? It's about a day's work, a day's labor, a day's income, a, a pence. So a hundred pence, is a hundred days that's about one-third of the year okay you could pay back one-third of the year this is a payable amount back this is not the astronomical figure that the previous one had this guy could actually pay back the hundred pence if given time now look at this but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence and he laid hands on him not a good way all right, and he took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And the fellow servant did likewise here, just what he did. He fell down at his feet and he besought him. He begged him, saying, Have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Man, that same fellow just had said the exact same thing to the one that he owed, and now this one is saying those words to him. And he would not, but went and he cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Listen, I've been forgiven, but I don't have to forgive you. I've been showed kindness, but I'm not going to be kind to nobody else. That is not the heartbeat of a Christian. That is not the heartbeat of a brother and sister in Christ. That is not the heartbeat of one that has received ultimate kindness. And for those individuals, I really have to say, uh, you need to question your salvational experience because I'm going to tell you what, something happened to me when I got saved. Something happened in my heart, and it didn't happen all at once, but there was a change that was taking place that I don't look the same way at other people. I don't look with vengeance. I don't look with deceit. I look at other people as with the kindness that God's been given to me, we should treat others in the same fashion that God has bestowed upon us. Now look what happened here. We talked about karma. I don't believe in, in, in the karma. I believe what's in grace and mercy. He sets before you a blessing and a curse and what you do with what you've been given. This one had received a great gift of being just having your debt, that stamp, paid in full. And now he throws this one in prison. You know what people around said? You hypocrite. You hypocrite. You know what a hypocrite is? It was an actor. It was a term given to actors who would get up and portray as plays and portray to be people who they were not. And that's exactly what this guy was saying. He's acting like he's been forgiven, but he's not expressing forgiveness to others. So we must understand here is that the fourth one was we need to be reminded of the kindness we've been granted, but the fifth and final point tonight, we will be reprimanded when we fail to express kindness toward others. As God's children, we should be kind to other people. We should be example setters of who he is, his grace and his mercy. And those that are watching will call us hypocrites if we do not respond in Christ-like fashion. Christ-like fashion, people see you. They know you're authentic. They know if you're real. So let's look at verses 31 through 34. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. And they came and told the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, because thou 
desiredest of me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion or kindness on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and angry. Let me just ask you a question. We talk about the love of God, but do you believe that God is always a loving God, but do you believe that he is a just and a righteous God? See, we fail to make mention of the wrath of God. There is a judgment day coming, and he loves us enough to not leave us in the condition we're in. And he was wroth, he is angry, and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. I believe that there are some individuals who have never truly let God take all of their hurts and all of their pains. You're still carrying them. But when you've truly been forgiven, you've got to lay it all down at Jesus' feet. You've got to lay down every bad deal. You've got to lay down every bad thought, every bad word, every bitter thing that's ever happened to you. I lay it at Jesus Christ's feet, and he will take those hurts, and he will bandage you up, and he will make a way for you. But I also believe that there are some Christians who have never really let God take their burden because they're still trying to carry them. And if you're an individual or if you're watching tonight and you just seem to be bitter and you don't want to be kind to nobody and you're dealing with some issues, then I, I encourage you, you need to really have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can help you with that. And true kindness comes from the heart. If you're really burdened, if you're really concerned about God, you will be concerned about other people. That is one of the true signs of being a Christian, caring about other people. You know, there's an old saying, an old song, if you're happy and you know it, what? Your face will surely show it. Your heart will surely show it. Your feet will surely show it. Your hands will surely show it. And you will express kindness to other people. Folks, I believe here at Oklahoma, when I read those things this morning, it encouraged my heart. Acts of kindness. It's not a one and done deal. It's not a seven time and done deal. It's not a 490 time deal. It's an every day of the week deal. I encourage you, acts of kindness, creative ways, creative thoughts, don't miss the moments. Drop them off in our box up here and I'll be able to read them next week. But I encourage you, acts of kindness, to be happy in Jesus, to be loving in Jesus, and to be kind one toward another. Steve, do you have a song for us this evening? If you would come, I want to encourage you, would you stand with me all over the church house this evening?